Hey guys, today I have a Walsh Centralin Speed Foaming Soap Dispenser which is broken and we're gonna fix it. So I've got this replacement pump unit from AliExpress and links are in the description which I'm gonna swap in to the one that's the existing one inside here. So first I'm just gonna show you what's happening here when I try to activate the dispenser you can hear that uh, nothing much is happening here a very feeble uh, sound of the motor so most likely the motor inside is broken and we can just swap this entire unit in first we'll have to remove this uh, outer cap here and we'll remove the batteries got the batteries off we'll then need to uh, remove six screws to get this white cap off the housing so the first two screws You'll have access to them after you review, uh, you remove this silicone gasket. And removing this gasket reveals two screws here. Yeah? Get these first two screws off. Next two screws over here. And finally, the last two screws here. So we can ignore these two screws because they're not uh, holding they're not securing the lid onto the housing we only need to remove uh, these last two screws here and these last two screws are of different dimensions they are of a different type than the four over here all right so having removed these six screws the cap comes right off and that uh, this tube actually was here so uh, we see a couple of things here what we'll now have to do is try to get this uh, pump unit off and get this new one in so we'll first need to disconnect the DC power connector alright so the first thing you'll notice is that um, right, these two, the original DC power connector and the replacement one, they're different. So we're going to have a problem um, fitting this in. We'll sort that out later, uh, but let's try to get this uh, pump unit out of the housing. So I'm going to go ahead to try to ease it out. Wiggle, wiggle, and it comes off. Right. So, just take note of the tubings uh, because we've got to connect them back later. This one here actually goes to the outlet so just put it back and yeah you can see these two tubings here 
this one here goes to the outlet which dispenses the, the foam this one here goes right to the bottom which is the intake of the soap solution and there's one more uh, elbow tube here which is uh, the air inlet all right so i'm going to remove uh, these few tubings and the whole assembly comes off i'm just going to put this aside for a while Now let's try to get this one in. So before we do that, before we place this in, let's try to connect the tubings first. Otherwise we'll have a problem later um, because we, we need to access uh, the different parts. So this is the outlet. So I connect the outlet. Try to push all the way in get a good secure fit. This one here is uh, the soap inlet. So let's try to get this one in here this way. All right. Let's try to get it, you know, make a loop around this way. Which was the original configuration. So we try to reassemble it as similarly as possible. And the air intake over here, which we'll need this elbow part. I'm gonna take this elbow off. Fit this here. Right. And that should be all. Okay, so uh, this is the air intake. So it goes it goes here. Jesus. Okay, so it's now connected. And uh, this one here, which is the outlet. Okay, so just try to push it all the way in. might have to snip this off a little at an angle so that uh, you know so that's more secure when 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 it's pushed all the way through so I'm gonna get a pair of snips to just create this angle that I need here. And I'll just try it again. And that should that should work. Alright, so now the last part uh, to try to get this in here, the DC power connector. Right, it's not gonna fit, so I'm not gonna try that. What you'll have to do is to, you know, try to release the metal connector inside from the plastic. So I've got the positive lead out. I'll do the same with uh, the negative lead. And I 
I've got both out. So we just try to connect the, the leads to the circuit board without this uh, white part here. Okay. So if you have observed how it uh, was originally, the, the positive lead goes here, the positive lead goes here, and the negative lead goes here. So this is the positive lead. Sure, it goes all the way in, and this is the negative lead. Make sure it goes all the way in as well, and I've got that fixed. So, right, so that's all there is to the internal assembly. I now have to. Um, cap everything back. So, facing a problem here because the battery, you know, the battery holder is getting in the way, or rather, this tube here is getting in the way of the battery holder. Now this is this has come off, so I've got two problems here. I'll pause the video now to sort these things out, and I'll come right back later. All right, I'm now done with the tube connections, so I'm just going to show you what I've done here. This short segment here is the tubing that goes to the air intake inlet connecting to the air intake of the pump unit. The original piece wasn't long enough so I've cut out a longer segment and I've connected it here. So this uh, short segment um, which is longer than the original one was actually cut out from the soap intake tube here. So you can see the, the tube here the original tube was actually long enough uh, for me to cut out this short segment and then I found a way to reroute the shortened uh, soap intake tubing but I have to be careful because uh, the original one was long for a reason it was long so that uh, it could go one loop around uh, with a large band radius around the pump unit and this was uh, intended by the designer so that uh, the no kings are created in, in, in that uh, soap tubing and the soap could flow freely. If the band radius is too sharp, then a kink might be created and that acts as a pinch point uh, which constricts the flow of soap and that could cause a troubleshooting problem later. So, uh, despite having shortened this tube so that I can, you know, cut a small piece out to, to serve as the air intake, I had to be careful with uh, looping the tube around in such a way as you can see to, to have a large enough band radius so that no kings are created. Right? And this piece here is largely original. This is the foam uh, outlet uh, and it's connected to this part. The only problem is that th this piece is of a larger diameter and tends to come loose a little more easily than the other tubes. So I'm going to come in here with a hot glue gun right? just to secure this tube over here, the foam outlet. Right, so this is the part that dispenses foam. And I've 
come in here with a hot glue gun to glue that down. Okay, so we're done with all the tube connections. I'll move on next to talk about the silicone gasket here. Alright, so this silicone o-ring or gasket is critical for waterproofing and we could just actually uh, put this back on here uh, but to enhance the waterproofing what I'm going to do now is to coat it with a layer of silicone grease and that would greatly enhance the waterproofing of the, the o-ring seal so I'm going to come in here with uh, Servisol silicone grease made in the UK and it's gonna get quite messy but uh, it's worth it worth the while just squeeze a pea-sized amount of uh, silicone grease and then just go all around the, the o-ring right so we are effectively coating it with a layer of silicone grease. Once you're done, apply another pea-sized amount of silicone grease and go one more time. So this will fully coat the o-ring all around with silicone grease. And when you're done, right? I'm going to put this back on but my fingers are now quite greasy I'm going to be careful not to uh, coat all the parts of the dispenser with silicone grease just minimize the mess and we are done alright so this is going to sit in quite well and uh, that thin film, that thin layer of silicone grease is going to serve us a long time to ensure complete waterproofing. Right now as you can see I have resoldered the battery terminal leads, the positive one here and the negative one here. And this is going to last us quite some time and we are all set to reinsert the battery terminal leads to the circuit board like so and with that done we can put the screws back on okay so I'm going to go ahead to put in the first four screws. First one goes here. Second one goes here. third one the fourth one So the first four screws are done and as for the next, the last two screws we have, and this may sound surprising, we have got to coat it with silicone grease because if 
you were to inspect the housing closely, these four screws are actually within the waterproofed uh, areas, whereas these two screws are actually exposed. So we have to coat it with a layer of silicone grease so that as we screw it in, there is a layer of waterproof grease between the housing socket and the screw and that provides waterproofing so come in here with the silicone grease now just coat this bit here just like so Make sure that it's coated all around 360 degrees. And we can now go ahead to screw it in. Right, and we'll do the same with the last remaining screw over here. As long as it's covered 360 degrees, we're ready to screw it in. Okay. Don't forget the silicone gasket for the battery compartment over here so as you can see two screws here hidden under the silicone the other two screws here within the battery compartment as well so these four screws are of no concern as far as waterproofing is concerned So now we are done. Okay. I'm now coming in with the batteries. So one here, another here. We are done installing the batteries. The top cover. And it's all nicely done up. I'm going to go ahead to switch it on. And just from the sound of the motor, we will be able to tell if it's working well. So we can hear nice and strong. Right? So I'm quite confident that this will work. And if my video ends here, then it works. Otherwise, I'll come back here uh, with more troubleshooting tips. So if you don't see me and this is the end of the video, then everything works well. Thank you.